Good morning. My name is Father Jim McGowan. I am the pastor of San Ysidro Catholic Church in Corrales. It is so good to be with you this morning. Let us begin. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And be with your spirit. My brothers and sisters, to prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries, let us first call to mind our sins. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord God, Only Begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father, Amen. Let us pray. O God, who showed the light of your truth to those who go astray, so that they may return to the right path, give all who for the faith they profess are accounted Christians the grace to reject whatever is contrary to the name of Christ and to strive after all that does honor it. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Deuteronomy. Moses said to the people, If only you would heed the voice of the Lord your God and keep his commandments and statutes that are written in this book of the law, when you return to the Lord your God with all your heart and all your soul. For this command that I enjoin on you today is not too mysterious and remote for you. It is not up in the sky that you should say, who will go up in the sky to get it for us and tell us of it that we may carry out? Nor is it across the sea that you should say, who will cross the sea to get it for us and tell us of it that we may carry it out? No, it is something very near to you, already in your mouths and in your hearts. You have only to carry it out. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
praise the name of God in song. Let your saving help, O oh God, protect me. And I will glorify him with thanksgiving. Turn to the Lord in your need and you will live. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Colossians. Christ Jesus is the image of the invisible God the firstborn of all creation. For in him were created all things in heaven and on earth, the visible and the invisible, whether thrones or dominions or principalities or powers. All things were created through him and for him. He is before all things, and in him all things hold together. He is the head of the body, the church. He is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in all things he himself might be a preeminent. For in him all the fullness was pleased to dwell, and through him to reconcile all things for him, making peace by the blood of his cross through him, whether those on earth or those in heaven. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be God. to God. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory Glory to you, o Lord. There was a scholar of the law who stood up to test Jesus and said, Teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Jesus said to him, What is written in the law? How do you read it? He said in reply, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your being, with all your strength, and with all your mind, and your neighbor as yourself. He replied to him, You have answered correctly. Do this, and you will live. But because he wished to justify himself, he said to Jesus, And who is my neighbor? Jesus replied, A man fell victim to robbers as he went down from Jerusalem to Jericho. They stripped him and beat him and went off, leaving him half dead. A priest happened to be going down that road, but when he saw him, he passed by on the opposite side. Likewise, a Levite came to the place, and when he saw him, he passed by on the opposite side. But a Samaritan traveler who came upon him, was moved with compassion at the sight. He approached the victim and poured oil and wine over his wounds and bandaged them. Then he lifted him on his own animal. He took him to an inn and cared for him. The next day he took out two silver coins and gave them to the innkeeper with the instruction, Take care of him. If you spend more than what I have given you, I shall repay you on my way back. Which of these three, in your opinion, was neighbor to the robber's victim? He answered, the one who treated him with mercy. 
Jesus said to him, Go and do likewise. The Gospel of the Lord. In our Gospel, we have a scholar of the law, and he is posing a very tricky question to Jesus. He is trying to trip him up. When he asks, what is the greatest commandment? How it must he do to inter inherit eternal life? And Jesus asks, what is written in the law? The scribe answers, and he answers correctly when he says, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, with all your being, and your neighbor as yourself. He has encapsulated the Ten Commandments into these two great commandments. The first three commandments spell out the love of God, that we have no other God before God, that we keep holy His day and His name. And the last seven remind us of our love of neighbor, that we honor our mother and father, that we do not kill, that we do not steal, that we do not commit adultery, that we do not covet our neighbor's wife or our neighbor's possessions. He has answered correctly. But he wants to justify his answer when he asks, who is my neighbor? And Jesus tells the most unlikely story. He tells of a man who is journeying from Jericho to Jerusalem, and he is waylaid by robbers, and he is beaten and stripped and left half dead. And then we see three men passing by, a priest, a Levite, and finally a Samaritan. The priest and the Levite pass by on the opposite side. They do not touch the man, most likely for fear of ritual impurity. It is the third man, the most unlikely of people, the Samaritan. And this would be a most unsavory response for the Jewish scholar. The Jews had nothing to do with Samaritans. Dating back to 933 BC, when the kingdom of Israel split into the two kingdoms, Israel in the north and the house of Judah in the south, Samaria was in the north and became a great center of idolatry. And the peoples married into the indigenous peoples. And then after the great Babylonian captivity in 533, the people never returned to the fold. So the Samaritan was considered rather unsavory. But he is the neighbor. He shows great compassion for this man who has been wounded and who has been left for dead. He cares for him. He, put, he binds his wounds. He anoints his wounds with oil and and water, and he takes him to the inn and he cares for him. He shows love and compassion for this man who is in need. He doesn't look at this man's face. He doesn't consider his color or his creed or his race or his gender or his politics. He sees his neighbor. He sees a brother in need, and he cares for him. We must do likewise. Jesus asks the question of the scholar, who then was the neighbor? And the scholar responds correctly the one who shows mercy, and that is the Samaritan, the most unlikely of people. We must remember this as we are compassionate and loving of our brothers and sisters. Everyone is our neighbor. The dignity of God resides in every person, and we must always be mindful of that and seek that dignity. Amen. Now let us profess our faith in our loving God. I believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us men, for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. 
I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. With confidence, let us now bring our prayers and concerns before the Lord, knowing that he does hear and answer. For all the neighbors in our lives, that they may experience the grace of God through the way we treat them with mercy during this jubilee year of mercy. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our, Lord, hear our prayer. For all those in our church who risk their comfort or even their safety in order to reach out and help others, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. That leaders of nations listen to the cries of their people in need, especially the poorest and those who live as outcasts. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For those who endure summer storms, wildfires, and floods, and for all who respond to their needs with generous hearts, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For all candidates for priesthood in our diocese, that they may have the courage and the conviction and the generosity to act upon them if they believe in their hearts that God is calling them to priesthood. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, hear these our petitions and those known to you in the silence of our hearts and in thy mercy. Take heed and answer us through your Son, Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we receive the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. You become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. By the mystery of this water and wine, we come to share in the divinity of Christ, who humbled himself for our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we receive the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands, who become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. With humble spirit and contrite heart, may be accepted by you, Lord, may I sacrifice in your sight this day be pleasing to you, Lord God. Wash me, O Lord, from my iniquity. Cleanse me of my sin. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his church. Look upon the offerings of the church, O Lord, as she makes her prayer to you, and grant that, when consumed by those who believe, they may bring ever greater holiness through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord, for out of compassion for the waywardness that is ours, he humbled himself and was born of the Virgin. By the passion of the cross, he freed us from unending death, and by rising from the dead, gave us life eternal. And so with the angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim.
You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all we are created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and eat of it for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples saying, take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of a new eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension to heaven, and as we look forward to a second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with this Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may attain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Francis and with all the saints, on his constant intercession in your presence, we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis, our Pope, and John, our Archbishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of his family who you have summoned before you. In your compassion, and merciful Father, gather yourself all your children scattered throughout the world toward departed brothers and sisters and all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life. Give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory. Through Christ our Lord, to whom we bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, 
we may always be free from sin and safe from all distress as we wait the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. And grace to grant a peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let us offer each other a sign of peace. Peace be with you. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, God of the world, the Father, and the Holy Spirit, through your death, give life to the poor. Free me by this most holy body and blood from all my sins and from every evil. Keep me faithful to your commandments, Lord, and never let me be parted from you. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I'm not worthy you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Let us pray. Having consumed these gifts, we pray, O Lord, that by our participation in this mystery, its saving effects upon us may grow through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go and announce the gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God.